some look at some news coming out of some financial roundups, John, particularly Ubisoft. Uh, they seem to what, <laughs> yeah, uh, they seem to want a piece of the free to play pie. This is from uh, Frederick Duguet. Duguet. Uh, Rose will fix that for me in chat. Uh, the way I pronounce that. <laughs> He's the CFO of Ubisoft, and he said during the earnings call, in line with the evolution of our high-quality lineup, there is increasingly diverse... Uh, that is increasingly diverse. We are moving on from our prior comment regarding releasing three to four premium AAAs per year. It is indeed no longer a proper indication of our value creation dynamics. Additionally, we are building high-end free-to-play to be trending towards AAA ambitions over the long term. This is purely a financial communication evolution and does not change the fact that we continue to expect a high cadence of content delivery, including powerful premium and free-to-play releases, as well as continued expansion of our post-launch plans with an increased focus on growing out our biggest franchises. Uh, John, what does that mean in human speak? (laughs) Look, we know we we give you so many games and there are these high quality AAA games, but um, I think Ubisoft, like you said, wants that free to play pie. I think they want the living universe pie where people are in there like Destiny and all, all that stuff. I, I think this is our next. Um, I admit this is me going out on a whim. I think this fits perfectly for like the division. Mm hmm. I think I think the division going free to play where you have the microtransactions. I think they would that would work really really well. And um, I, I I find it odd and very interesting though because every single time like Ubisoft comes out with a new, a new game in the sense of like Watch Dogs. Well, it didn't do too financially bad, but like Assassin's Creed, banger every single time. The next iteration because they know what they're doing. So I think this is taking the, that idea of like those living games and you can just jump in whatever you want, but they can piecemeal you to get a new gun or the awful word that is called battle pass. I can see them actually doing that one too with, and I, I read this article and the first thing that came to mind was the division and it, it fits very well in that world and that concept, especially if you like put the two groups together, whatever the division three could be. And just, you have that. I think that'd be interesting. I, let's see how Ubisoft actually like handles it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty hit or miss with them. Yeah. Uh, I was looking into their financials and I, I found some stats that makes it clear like why they, they want to go this way. Uh, so obviously their sales are up massively uh, mm. over the past year since the pandemic and other reasons and new console launches and all that. Uh, their digital revenue is a big part of that. Uh, where it gets interesting is you look at a stat they call player recurring investment or PRI. Uh, this is what they use as a catch-all term for digital items, DLCs, season passes, subscriptions, advertising, etc. That was only, I say only, it's, it's a big lot of money, uh, 35% of their total uh, sales revenue for the year, um, which sounds like a lot, but you compare it to EA, where 74% of their sales in the past year have come from live services and uh, okay. this sort of play, uh, PRI stuff. 65% of Activision's in the last quarter uh, was, was their PRI uh, percentage. And so, yeah, most of Ubisoft's net sales come from uh, their back catalog, uh, which was 58% this year uh, and was over 50% for a third consecutive year. So they're just like, okay. keep selling Assassin's Creed games. And as their back catalog yeah. gets bigger, they keep selling all their games. Um, but you mentioned uh, Heartlands, or sorry, you mentioned The Division. Um, and yeah, look at their plans for that that they announced shortly before this uh, earnings call, it was clear that they were trying to emulate the Call of Duty model, where they have yeah. mainline Division, then they have the Division Heartlands, which is their PC-based free-to-play experience, uh, sort of mimicking the likes of Warzone or, or something like mm-hmm. that. And then they're also working on a Division mobile game that will come later along the line. And oh, yeah, that. I forgot about that one. Um, so, yeah, that... that oh, and the movie. Yeah, uh, that exactly mirrors Call of Duty's uh, thing, where they have Black Ops 2, they have Warzone, and they have Call of Duty Mobile. And that's like the yeah. three layers of Call of Duty. They're trying to mimic that with their franchises because <laughs> they see just how much money like EA and Activision are making. And Billions. So, yeah. Um, uh, the next part of the story comes from uh, people reading this and sort of misunderstanding. Uh, 
people sort of took this news as Ubisoft is going to stop developing three to four premium titles per year and instead focus on free to play from now on. Uh, That is, in fact, not the case. I have two tweets here, one from Ubisoft senior analyst Sean Lama responding to Jeff Keighley. He said, hi, regarding the Ubisoft comment, it's in reference to -to free-to-play becoming a larger share of the revenue pie, not an indication that there will be less traditional paid games like Assassin's Creed. The content mix is expanding, not changing. A good comparison uh, is the evolution of COD since Warzone. Uh, Yeah, we, we did like the one we just made. And then Ubisoft spokesperson, spokesperson's statement to Eurogamer: We are excited to be in, we are excited to be investing more in free to play experiences. However, we want to clarify that this does not mean reducing our AAA offering. Our aim is to continue to deliver premium experiences to players such as Far Cry Six, Rainbow Six Quarantine, okay. Riders Republic, and Skull and Bones, to name a few. What the while also hell? expanding our free-to-play portfolio and strengthening our brands to reach even more players. We will get to that. Uh, but, but yeah, Bones. We'll, we'll get to what? Skull and Bones. Skull what? and Bones is a whole other egg to crack. Um, <laughs> No, uh, yeah, there was just a misunderstanding in the language, and I think they were like yeah. expecting this and trying to get ahead of it. Uh, they were very much like, and you can like when you reread the the initial passage about like how they phrased it, it makes sense. Is that we're, they're going to continue to make three to four AAA games, and that is very important to them. But it's not going to be an indication of how valuable their product is as a whole because yeah. of how much money they expect this live server shit to make, which is a fair assessment. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I, course, yeah, I, I'm following this. I, I, in my head, I'm still kicking around some ideas of different games that could go this free to play model. What would like? What would happen if they did Beyond Good and Evil Two? Like, we we don't know. What, <laughs> yeah, we don't know what that game is. No, I, I was just not. like, yeah, we have no idea. What if it's just this open world game? And I mean, we have jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt in there too, doing all the the stuff behind the scenes with all the the uh, like art some of the art and some of the music and whatnot what if it just becomes a free-to-play thing and they actually like make it a live-in world that would disappoint piss a lot the hell out of me john yeah that would piss up <laughs> me off um they've they've tried free to they're, they're like only dipping their toe into free-to-play they are way behind the yeah. curve on this which is why they felt the need to uh they had um what was the dumb game roller skate roller skate neon roller skate round the ring Fight oh, each other, roller skate game. Oh hell! Forget the name oh, of yeah, that. I know what you're talking about. Roller champions. That was it. Uh, that didn't do so well. Uh, but that was like their first like dip into free to play. Also, but, it was rollerblading. Yeah. Also, <laughs> it was like a new IP as well. So like, I think yeah. they're trying to to leverage their uh, existing IP to try and like boost their free to play stuff. But no, they were like again, as I say, I feel like they were expecting this to be misinterpreted. So throughout this yeah. earnings call, they were driving home a big focus on back catalogue and a diverse uh, portfolio. Uh, This is a quote. Our decisions will always be dictated by the long-lasting value of our diverse portfolio. They see this as a long-term growth strategy. Um, They're they're expecting growth next year from from their back catalogue. They're still expecting to launch big games this year, as I mentioned before, like Far Cry 6 and and Rainbow Six. John, could you wager a guess at what the top five contributors to PRI were for Ubisoft? What's the biggest live service microtransaction-y Ooh. franchises for them? Um, I'm going to say Siege. Siege is number one. Rainbow okay. Six Siege um, is number one for them. Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed like, number two. Uh, number two? Yep. Okay. Um, Ooh, ooh. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jesus. A franchise we what just talked division? about trying to emulate the division? Call of Duty. Yep, The Division. Yeah, The Division. Uh, okay. The next two I'll just give to you For Honor and okay. Ghost Recon are the other two. Ah, oh, I keep on forgetting about For Honor. I forget. Yeah. I forgot they they're actually they did that one. Damn it. Still going strong. Still going strong. Yeah. Uh but yeah, it, it seems like um they feel like they need to be pushed in this direction to to mm. uh, expand into the free to play gaming scene otherwise their investors are going to be asking questions but they yeah. were driving home that like our bread and butter is still our three to four big open world nonsense games like assassin's yeah. creed um <laughs> so yeah I, I think this is a good way for them to go uh also uh regarding the division heartland's 
uh, will be PC Console Cloud expected financial year 22. So that is okay. um, this year going to March next year. Uh, Division Mobile will be beyond financial year 2022, so we're waiting even longer for that. And they're also awaiting a first mobile game with Tencent to soft launch in Q4 financial year 2022. No other details on that. Um, okay. But yeah, I think it's... Interesting. Also, ultimately a good thing. I feel like yeah. Ubisoft for a long time in their game design have felt conflicted where they don't know what they want to be. You play an Assassin's Creed game and it's very clearly a single player narrative experience but also feels like you're playing a grindy uh, live service oh God, based yeah. game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't know what it wants to be. I feel like a little bit of uh, like separation partition in that space would be good for them. I would like yeah. uh, smaller, not necessarily smaller in time, but like, well, yes, yeah, smaller in time. I don't want 100 hours yes. Assassin's Creed games anymore. Uh, but like, you can still make it chunky, just don't make it excessive because you're trying to like milk microtransactions and stuff and keep doing post-launch DLC and stuff. That's fine. They added Ireland to an Assassin's Creed game, which I want it forever. I haven't played it yet, but it's there. It's good. Mm-hmm. Um, Didn't they also say that uh, Assassin's Creed is no longer going to be like a stealth game? Which it hasn't well, yeah, been it hasn't in the been last for, three. Yeah, yeah for, it hasn't been since Origins, at least. Yeah, so it's kind of one of those, just let's not worry about it anymore and just cut it off there. I I respect it, but I'm with you. Like, give me a little bit smaller. I, I'm interested to see how they're going to do this. I What they're going to do with what IPs, if they're going to try and leverage a new IP and not it it not being like roller skating. Yeah. I, I think you might want to do that, Ubisoft, I'm just saying. Going back Ooh, to... I wonder if Nintendo would do it. You, do what, what? what if they actually did, like... Uh, the next Rabbids, Mario and Rabbids game. What if they got on with the Nintendo and made that R- Mario and Rabbids 2 where it was uh, PvP, 4v4? <laughs> it would be all Waluigi's. There would be oh, would. 100, 100 Waluigi's running around this world fighting Rabbids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all that game would be. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Um, moving on to, like, when I was reading this, I was like, I knew that Skull and Bones was delayed. Um, yeah. which is which is the news they literally just said in the conference call. It's now going to be released between 2022 and 2023. We don't know we, whenever it's done. Uh, they're saying they... Oh, I have a quote here. Uh, it's the standard Skull and Bones nonsense. Additional time will allow the team to fully deliver on its vision. Great. Uh, when I was reading this, cool. though, I thought that they were going to pivot Skull and Bones to be a free-to-play game. Yeah, it is in fact not doing that. They just really want to make a really good single player pirate game. <laughs> when did Skull and Bones get like announced? It was twenty sixteen, right? Yeah, sixteen, seventeen, in there somewhere. I think it was the same yeah. year that uh, Beyond Good and Evil two first got. Announced, oh, I think you're right. Yep, or like re-announced, I guess. Um, but yeah, they're they are just they have. A huge amount of faith in the Skull and Bones team to just like get it done uh, eventually, and not just like straight up cancel it. Uh, Some additional notes before we move on from the Ubisoft stuff. Uh, Oh yeah, here here's here's one that got me. So they're talking about post launch plans and how that's a big driver for even in our single player games, we can get a high amount of player recurring income from post launch content, and so they say. We have bigger post-launch plans coming this year, notably for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and okay. Prince of Persia Sands of Time Remake. Oh shit, I forgot that game was coming out. <laughs> John, what post-launch content could you add to Prince of Persia Sands of Time Remake? What does that mean? <laughs> it's not even like there's going to be something. They were like, this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Prince of Persia. Those are our two examples of great DLC plans. I... <laughs> What are they gonna yeah, add? I, mean, Assassin's Creed, I don't know what it's gonna be like. Assassin's Creed, we, like you can pretty much do anything, but like Prince of Persia, the only thing I can think of is they add something from Assassin's Creed in there, yeah. or like you get like uh, something from Origins or anything like that. I I don't know. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah, the, the only other thing I could think of is like other Prince of Persia games, but surely that you can't yeah. count that as post-launch DLC. That's a whole no. other game. I was thinking, like, maybe they release uh, that demo that was circulating around for a cancelled Prince of Persia game. Maybe they 
Paul shot up, re-released it. I don't know. What the hell are they thinking over there? Maybe they go back to like the original and the DLC is like the old school uh, side-scrolling Prince of Persia. That'd yeah. be cool. I'd be uh, down with that. Mm-hmm. They're still referring to it as Rainbow Six Quarantine. We had a, a false report uh, a while ago that the name of that was changing after the uh, COVID oh, yeah. pandemic. That is, in fact, not the case, and they put that to bed. Uh, so it's still called Rainbow Six Quarantine. Uh, so they're sticking right. to that. Um, and yeah, just like more stuff about free to play. Uh, that's just the, the general direction they were going. Um, and also, they mentioned, uh, well, we'll be talking about E3 a little later. They did mention that regarding free to play stuff, uh, they will not be mentioning uh, a lot or any free to play stuff at E3 uh, their Ubisoft okay. Forward event this year they're going to have dedicated communications so the focus will be on premium stuff this year cool 